guards enough gear to protect the men. Yeah, there was an Allison. Dr. Thornton's too, but the ghost got them both. I'm glad I ain't in Chandler's shoes. Me too. Tracy would get here. He'll be here. He's on his way from Washington now. With the car Lieutenant Cosgrove has waiting for us, we should hit it right on the nose. I hope so, Bill. I've always been fond of Chandler and his daughter. Well, this is more than just an official assignment to me. If we only knew who the ghost is. It'll be a cinch if we did, Miss June. You may never know his identity, Cosgrove. I might believe that some desperate character had antagonized my work as a criminologist. But if it wasn't for Allison and Thornton. The ghost. The ghost. He's well named. Corey is ready to report on Chandler. I'll see him. We flew over the Chandler estate to locate the guard. I've given Ruth's first sketch of the ground. I know the place well. I've been there frequently as a member of the Secret Council. Is the street in front of the house blocked off? No, sir. But there are police at the gate. It doesn't matter. If the ghost, I can go anywhere. Get my car ready. We'll leave at once. I promised Chandler to meet him at noon. Put on the compact disc. Ready? Go ahead. the car door slam. Me too. Getting it, Tom. Two minutes and twelve. You're letting this get you, Mr. Chandler. There won't be any ghost here today. Those doors. Who opened those doors? You stay here. Mind your watch, Chandler. It's 12 o'clock. Katie! Yes. I heard something. I... Katie! 
you, and I'm terribly sorry. So take care of her. <laughs> Too late to do anything here, Lieutenant. Search every inch of the grounds, will you? Okay, Dick. Wait a minute. That door was closed when I came in here. That's right, I closed it myself. There may be fingerprints. You better go the other way. Okay. Yes, some of my men reported hearing a peculiar whining sound just before Chandler was shot. I remember having heard something of the sort myself. Of course, I could have imagined it. No, Lieutenant, you didn't imagine it. The sound was here. I heard it myself. Doesn't make sense. If the fingerprint on this death threat is what I think it is, it'll make less sense. Come on, let's go to work. Okay. Here are the fingerprints, just as you thought, Dick. The ones on the death note and those found on the door are the same. They're the fingerprints of Rackets Regan. Rackets Regan? But Regan's dead. That's right. He was executed in Sing Sing two years ago. Ghost is well named when he can leave the fingerprints of a dead man. How did you know they were Regan's? When you couldn't identify the prints found at Allison's and Thornton's, I had a hunch. That's why I had you check the dead file. Didn't you handle that case? That's right. I helped the Secret Council of Eight send Regan to the chair. Just what was the secret council, Dick? It was before my time. Eight men of position and wealth organized to rid the city of Rackett Regan and his reign of crime. They asked for my assistance. We were finally able to pin the murder of Tony Madden on Regan, and he got the death penalty. And we're chasing a corpse. We're chasing something not even as solid as a corpse, Bill. We're chasing a sound. You mean that high wine I spoke of? That's right. It's our only death and clue. Because the same sound was heard in the neighborhood of Allison and Thornton's homes when they were murdered. Lieutenant, I want all the commercial radio stations to cooperate with our official station and try and get in on that sound the next time it occurs. Keep the 24-hour listening post. Right. Bill, get all the files on Rackets Regan and bring them over to June. He's offered me the use of her father's laboratory, and that's one of the best criminal workshops in the country. Okay, Dick. I begin to see your plan. By creating a reign of terror, you can force the city to accept any demands you make. There's more than that. As you know, Racket Sweegan was my brother. Until Dick Tracy stepped in, we were able to defy the law because I knew every move the Secret Council would make. We planned a vast criminal enterprise, a combine we called Crime Incorporated. Now I'm Crime Incorporated. Is Dick Tracy is a dangerous adversary? He's clever, I grant him that. But he can't fight an invisible man. Thanks to you, Tracy is harmless. And what's our next move? I'm ready for Martin now. What's the latest you have on him? He's an article in last month's American geologist. The uh, same geologist warns of peril. Dr. Jonathan Martin, noted geologist, has provided officers of the Navy Bureau of Operations and the General Staff of the United States Army with starting information conclusively demonstrating that it would be possible for an enemy to destroy New York. Doctor's information has been surrounded with greatest secrecy. I must know what he's discovered, and I'll learn that tonight. Radio Room, headquarters calling Tracy. Radio room, headquarters calling Tracy. This is Tracy. We're getting reception on that sound you wanted triangulated. Yes, where is it? In the neighborhood of the naval base at Rockaway Point. Keep me informed by short wave. The plan is clear to you, Corey. Yes, sir.
disturbance and halted in the vicinity of the Rockaway Point airfield. Follow through, Bill. Car number three reporting. We got the message. Just open this door, Dr. Martin. Why, no, Greg. That's funny. Looks like our hunch is right, Bill. Get inside and cover that part of the building. I'll take care of the man on the roof. Dr. Martin, Dr. Martin, let me in. Secret Council of Eight. You also possess great personal wealth. I require that wealth. If you doubt my ability to get it, you have but to remember the deaths of Allison and Dr. Thornton and Chandler. I demand a ransom of $100 million. If you fail in this, I will destroy New York City. Give your decision to the press. I will then instruct you how to deliver the ransom. The ghost. 
Did each of you gentlemen receive one of these notes? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. What I maintain is the act of a madman. I heartily agree with you. A hundred million dollars. But the man is a maniac. You may be right, Booster, but this maniac is dangerous. Collectively, we do possess great wealth. Might be wise to compromise with it. Compromise? You don't compromise with a maniac. I think Mr. Weldon's right. You realize, of course, that all our lives are at stake. Yes, Mr. Cabot. But if you compromise with this murderer, you're turning over the richest city in the world to the mercy of a blackmailer. Well, just how do you propose to fight the ghost, Mr. Tracy? Stall him until I find Martin. I'll start a dragnet that will put every honest citizen on our side. We'll find Martin, and when we do, we'll find the ghost. You may be interested in this Martin. The council is going to do nothing of the kind. I learned that it's merely a stall. I suppose that means you'll use my discovery to destroy New York. Precisely. You will remain here. If you have lied to me, I personally will attend you. I leave the details in your hands, Lucy. Uh, won't you be seated, Dr. Martin? Martin is in your charge. He's not to leave this room. Number, please. Number, please. Number, please. Service on 18. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we will bring you the stock market report. Yeah, Sterling 9289 is out of order. Look at it flashing. M A R T I N Martin. Kirby me through to the police. They get the listing of that phone. Three twenty one. Front Street. Don't interfere with that line. Stand by until you hear from me. Yes? Yes, Lieutenant. Maybe a plant, but it sounds great to me. Good. We'll meet you there. And bring enough men and some tear gas, and we'll crack that place wide open.
What do you want? Is the lady of the house in? Get crazy. Ghost doesn't want anything to happen to you. Come on. would smash through and bring about an earthquake and a tidal wave that would be catastrophic. The ghost isn't bluffing. He can destroy New York. And that's why he kidnapped you, to get this information. Yes. But great heavens, man, why did you give it to him? Mr. Tracy, did you ever have oil-soaked bamboo splinters driven under your nails and then set fire? I'm sorry, Dr. Martin. If you have any suggestions, I'll be glad to act on them. First, we must start to evacuate the city. I heard the ghost discuss the use of a bomber to smash in the fort. He's probably a sea now. I'll be in the air in ten minutes. If you shoot him down, be careful. You might serve his purpose by exploding the bombs over the fort. I'll take care of that. Bill! Lieutenant Cosgrove! We have to evacuate New York. Call the fire department and the American Legion. All citizens' attention. New York City must be evacuated at once. Proceed in an orderly manner toward the Westchester Hill. All members of the police and fire department on legal off duty will report immediately to the All members of the American Legion will report to the nearest police officer. This is urgent. The city is in grave peril. If this map is correct, I can start stopping these bombs.
gosh, Dick. If you hadn't crashed that plane before it hit the water, there wouldn't be anything left. Look! It's Lucifer. Say, isn't he the crooked scientist who planned Rackets Regan's jobs? That's right. We've been looking for him ever since we captured Regan. He's alive. He may be a lead to the ghost. Right. Jail. They can't keep him. I need Lucifer. If anything happens to his ray machine and he's not here to fix it, I'm through. We've got to get him out. They won't allow anyone near him. How can you spring him from solitary? There's a council meeting this morning. After Tracy gives us the details, I'll know better what to do. You wait here till I get back. I'll need you. Are you convinced that this Lucifer is working with the ghost? Definitely. He's the one who dropped the bombs that caused the tidal wave. Besides, the ghost leaves Rackets Regan's fingerprints. He must be one of the old organization. Lucifer was Regan's brain. Has he uh, given you any information? He claims he can't remember anything. Do you believe him? He may be suffering from mental shock. It's a case for Dr. Metzikoff, our psychiatrist. I'll have him examine Lucifer today. Then you'll give us a report on the doctor's findings? As soon as I receive one. Good day, gentlemen. Good day. June, will you get Dr. Metzikoff on the telephone for me, please? Certainly. Hello? Oh, Mr. Tracy. Yes. Yes, I have read about that case. Very interesting. Yes, I, certainly I should be delighted. Good. Shall we say 2 o'clock this afternoon? All right, Dr. Metzikoff. Yes. Goodbye. I am Dr. Metzikoff. Oh, yes, Doctor. We've been expecting you. Riley, show Dr. Metzikoff to Lucifer's cell. Yes, sir. This way, Doctor. That's him. Hey, you. Here's someone to see you. Thank you. I'll call you when I finish my examination. Yes, sir. Dr. Metzikoff in, I'm Dick Tracy. Oh, yes. Mr. Tracy, the doctor had to go out on an emergency call. He wanted you to come in and wait. Thank you. Oh, by the way, may I use the telephone? Why, well, yes, certainly.
Here's my report to Mr. Tracy. Goodbye. Goodbye, Dante. Hello, Lieutenant. Dick Tracy. Have you let anyone in to see Lucifer? Why, Dr. Metzikoff is just here to examine him. That man's an imposter. Is he still there? No, he's gone. Then search Lucifer and throw a guard around his cell. I'll be right down. Yes, sir. Riley. The doctor was a pony. Chris Lucifer, don't let him out of sight for a second. Yes, sir. come through this gate. He must be in a cell block. Search every cell. Yes, sir. They're looking for him. Yes, and he'd better hurry. These tubes will burn out soon. Donovan, you stay here. You two go outside and watch the front doors. Wave is almost up. What happened? Lucifer, get out of the cell. You can hear. I searched every cell. He must be in the cell block. We'll search the rest of the building. Take this man's gun and stand guard on the door. No one on the outside. Let's take a look around and see if we can find anything. The tubes are going. Keep looking. Okay.
Lucifer at large, we can expect the ghost to resume his attacks on every member of this council. You're convinced that this maniac is determined on revenge because of the execution of Rackets Regan? Everything points that way, Mr. Brewster. It seems to me that there should be some way to protect us. We're doing everything possible, Mr. Morton. With Mr. Tracy on the job, we should be safe. Thank you, Mr. Cabot. You will be if you'll give us your complete cooperation. I request that none of you make any important business moves without advising me. In this manner, I'll be able to take steps to protect you. But, Mr. Tracy, I've just completed a contract for special tools and dyes calling for immediate delivery in Canada. I'll arrange for some men to guard the shipment. But it's being loaded aboard a train at this moment. Over what lines is it being routed? Well, to tell you that, I'd have to check with the shipping schedule. And that's in the office safe. I see. Well, I'm sorry, gentlemen, but you'll have to excuse me. Uh, yes, if we've finished our business, I move that we adjourn. I agree right. with that. Yes, yes of course. Mr. Trent, would you mind waiting a moment? Mr. Tracy, I don't wish to appear unreasonable, but I'm due at an important meeting in regard to the shipment I mentioned. The sum of money involved is large, and if we don't make delivery within the stipulated time, I'll be ruined. I realize the emergency, but would you mind telephoning your secretary to permit me to see the shipping schedule? All right, I'll phone her. Thanks. I'll notify my men. Being a member of the council permits me to be one jump ahead of Tracy. Makes it much easier for us. remove that schedule without my having known it. Do you remember anything unusual happening? A sound, perhaps? Well, now that you mention it, I did hear a peculiar sound. Do you know where the machinery is being loaded? At the Union Freight Depot. Would you call the freight manager for me, please? Yes, sir. Red Mountain Junction is the best place to attack. If Corey can take some men and pass cars and cut over this mountain road. By doing that, we should arrive well in advance of the train. Get in the car, Bill. We're leaving for Red Mountain Junction. Got the shipping schedule? Yes, but I have a duplicate. Red Mountain Junction's an isolated siding. We can catch the train there. Red Mountain Junction it is. We've got the train crew locked up in a boxcar and the train's ready to go. We'll put this man with him and pull down the line a couple of miles. Who's that?
shack and I said... Never mind that. Where's the tank? Uh, right over there. Belongs to the army. I know, but I've got to borrow it. You notify the proper authorities. Yeah. at Lakeview Harbor. We've got to get it this time. It's our last chance. Your men will get it all right. It'll be easy to do while the ship is being inspected at the canal locks. Yes, our plan should work. But they'll have to be careful. Tracy has flown down to the canal to watch the ship himself. See you, Captain. The orders have been carried out. The only traffic in the harbor is our patrol boats. Have they all reported? We're waiting to hear from the last one. As soon as we do, we'll clear the freighters with the lock. Fine. That may be them reporting now. Canal patrol, Captain. Yes, Davis. What's that? Your boat was attacked. They grabbed us as soon as we landed at Halfway Island. Yeah, I managed to get away. He says they took the guards' uniforms. That means they intend to impersonate them in order to get to the ship. Where's halfway out? About 30 miles out. Due north. Thanks. Hello, Davis. I'll send the long cap to pick you up.
You got enough explosives here to blow the Empire State Building into the Atlantic. Bring the dummies. Dick Tracy. Did you recognize the men who attacked your patrol? No, I never saw them before, but this was torn off of one of them in the struggle. TSM 472. TSM. Trent Steel Mill. I think you've got it, Bill. Trent's machinery, Trent shipment, and Trent Steel Mill. Collins, the man you're after, Tracy. It looks like it, all right. But I'll have to do some undercover work to make sure. Can you get me on Collins' working crew? Oh, yes. Fine. And could you give Bill a badge that will allow him to roam around the plant? Sure. I'll make him one of my assistants. Fine. May I use your telephone? Go right ahead. Thank you. Well, if there's no further business to discuss, I... I'll take it. Trent speaking. Well, I'm glad you called, Tracy. We've been waiting for you. What's that? You found a clue to the ghost. Well, how soon will you be over? Oh, you won't be able to see us today. I see. What clue did he find? He says he prefers to keep it to himself until he's able to follow it through. That's nonsense should know in order to be able to protect ourselves. I don't like this at all. Neither do I. But I've wasted enough time today. I have business to attend to. So have I. Right. I'm sure Mr. Tracy has good reasons for handling it this way. Good day, Miss Chamberlain. meeting, I learned that Tracy picked up a clue when he stopped us from getting those precision tools. What kind of clue? I don't know. What manager you, Corey? Four of our key men. Get in touch with them right away and warn them to be on the lookout for Tracy.
you're in a racket, ain't you? Not exactly. Pretty fancy for a steel mill worker. We use bandanas around here. You don't look like a steel man to me. Well, it's a difference as long as I do my work. Well, I don't want any guy put in my game without me picking them out. Hey, Colin, the boss is on the phone. He wants to talk to you. Okay. If that pile I move when I get back, I'll bend a shovel over your head. Hello. Corey talking. Listen. Tracy picked up a clue when he spiked our plan to destroy those precision tools. Maybe he found the bass I lost. That must be it. There was a new man put in my gang this morning. You should have believed my warning when I told you you couldn't get away, Trent. The ghost. It's useless trying to see where I am. You can't. What do you want? The complete plans for your precision machinery. Come on, where are they? It's taken most of my money and many years of hard work to perfect that machinery. I haven't time to argue. Sit down. You have two minutes to produce those plans. Thank you very much. Mr. Trent was only in for a short time, Mr. Tracy. 
He received a telephone call that upset him very much, and he left immediately. Do you know where I could reach him? He said he was going home. Thanks. We'll see him there. Why do you suppose Kent left his mill in such a hurry? That's what I want to find out. It won't be long until the ray exhausts itself and the ghost becomes visible. The, the plans are in my office. I know better. Get up to the house and see if everything's all right. for you. You have exactly 15 seconds to give this man the combination of that ward. All right. All right. All right. Here. Here it is. Open the vault. You thought I'd fallen with my man, didn't you? Boy, I... I... Open that door again. Why? Yes. Put that floor back in position. What's that other lever for? I... When, when that's turned, it prevents the trap door from falling. Set it. Go ahead. I'll be right behind you. I wonder what's holding him up. evidently had this trap fixed to keep the vault from being robbed. But it didn't work out right. It didn't do Trent any good. That explodes any idea we might have had that Trent was the ghost. Yeah. This job was done by the ghost himself. That's Rackus Regan's fingerprint. Wait a minute, Bill. Don't touch anything now. We'll call Trent's secretary. Trent's secretary has checked the contents of the safe. 
And the only thing missing is a set of plans for precision machinery dies. Where does that get us? It gets us this far. No one can dispose of precision machinery dies without being reported immediately. Well, the ghost is smart enough to know that. Yes, and smart enough to offer them to the safest and best pay market, foreign powers. Say, I just remembered. Here's a telegram I found in Collins' locker at Trent Steel Mill. It fits in, doesn't it? Dragon is a well-known foreign agent. Tuesday? Why, that's tomorrow. June, get me watching them. I want any information they have on Arno Draga. Right, Dick. I have made arrangements for contacting Draga. Trask will handle it. I see. Are we going out to the ship now? I am. I don't want to take the plans there until I'm sure of Draga. You and Corey follow me later. If there's anything suspicious about Draga, I'll radio you in the car. Very well. Dragon, age 37, height 5 feet 10 inches, brown hair, gray eyes, known to be an international spy, an agent for foreign powers. Send a copy of that picture to all our men. Right away. You come with me? Just to where are we going? To Greenpoint. I have a boat waiting there for it. All right. Go ahead, Wilson. I'm trailing Dragger from the airport. He's in a car headed to Greenpoint. Stay with him. I'll meet you at the point. Telephone Bill Carr. Tell him to pick up Cosgrove and wait here for orders. All right, Dick.
We got to wait. I searched the car and found this. Maybe it'll tell us where they're going. Now, there's a chartered point at Sheepshead Bay. You will pardon me for remaining masked. My identity is known only to my closest associates. I am only interested for the plans for my government. Do you have them here? They'll be here shortly. This affair is badly managed. I already have been put in danger of my life. Now I'm here with the cash. But you haven't kept your part of the bargain. I assure you, Mr. Dragar, the bargain will be kept. The man bringing the plans must have been delayed. But he should be here any minute now. Sit down, Mr. Dragar. the invisible machine. So, there is the police instead of the planes you promised. How did that happen? I am wondering that myself. Perhaps you can explain.
got you. Ghost. He's... Uh, he's in... Jim. unconscious and hurt so badly, we had to take him to the nearest doctor. He'll stay there until he's strong enough to be moved to a hospital. Is it safe to leave him at the doctor's? If the ghost should find out where he is, why... Hello. Yes, he's right here. Dr. Henderson, the sheep's head bay calling you, Mr. Tracy. Thank you. Yes? That's fine. Tell him I'll have an ambulance out there tonight. Well, your man got away all right. What do you mean, got away? Why, in the ambulance, of course. They picked him up about ten minutes ago. The ambulance hasn't come yet. It's following us out. Why, there must be some mistake. The ambulance came here. There was an armed guard with the driver who said that Mr. Tracy had told them to pick up Wilson. I... I don't understand. I think I do. Which way did that ambulance go? Why, east. Come on, Bill. <laughs> Ghost? It sure looks like it. How did he know I was sending an ambulance at night? Dick Tracy calling state police headquarters. Dick Tracy calling state police headquarters. Come in, Tracy. A wounded man has been kidnapped by two men in an ambulance. They were last seen heading east from Sheepshead Bay on Route 106. Please notify all officers in that area to barricade the roads and make every effort to locate that ambulance. All right, Tracy, I'll broadcast a general alarm. State Police Headquarters calling all cars, calling all cars. Be on the lookout for an ambulance. Last seen traveling east on 106 from Sheepshead Bay. Calling QR23. Calling QR23. QR23 answering. Come in, QR14. Cuts are wise. They sent out a general alarm for us. Where are you now? Going east on 106, about 10 miles out of Sheepshead Bay. Try to keep going on Highway 42, then turn north to River Meadow. I'll have a plane there to pick you up. Right, we'll try to make it. Take a look at our patient. We got a long start on us. Yeah. There's a good chance one of the patrol cars will pick them up.
Bulletins, you know, cars. Radio bulletin. The ambulance just escaped from a police car. Turn off 106 and went north on 42. It is now headed north on Highway 42. North on 42? Say, can't we take the... We sure can. We can cut across an Elm Road to 42 and save 10 miles. Come in. Where are you now? Going north on 42, about eight miles from the meadows. All right. We'll be there to pick you up. Right.
in that direction. And the final result was that we lost Officer Wilson. Well, you're fortunate you didn't lose your own lives. Sorry to be so late, gentlemen. Mr. Tracy was telling us of a ghost attempt to kill him. It's fortunate for us that he wasn't successful, Morton. There's a large shipment of gold bullion arriving from Europe today. You mean it's here at last? The ship is scheduled to dock within a few hours. Due to conditions abroad, Mr. Morton was forced to close his European banking exchange. And the gold is coming from there? Exactly. By convoy. I'm sorry I couldn't let you know before. I can understand the secrecy that's necessary in such cases. Its loss would be a severe blow to me at this time. Undoubtedly. One thing I can't understand, Cabot. Why were you notified instead of Morton? I'm acting as his representative. Ooh, Cabot's an expert on foreign exchange law. I see. I'd appreciate it, Tracy, if you sort of keep an eye on the gold until we get it started on its way to Fort Knox. I'll be glad to. When is it to be removed from the ship? As soon as we receive authorization from the convoying nation. Do you know when that will be? A representative is bringing the order to your home at five this afternoon, Morton. I'll be on hand. Well, gentlemen, if there's no further business, I move we adjourn. I second the motion. Tell him that our sending orders has been moved up, but he'd already left. Oh, well, that's too bad. If you don't care to wait, I'll take the papers. I'm sorry, Mr. Morton, but Cabot's the only one who can acknowledge receipts for them. Well, I didn't know. If you make yourself comfortable in the library, as soon as I get into some clothes, I'll join you. Thank you. I'll thank you to hand me that briefcase, Commander Oz. we've heard when the ghost attacks. That shot came from the house. Cover the side and rear. Commander Horse! Commander Horse, let me in! I'm afraid something happened to Commander Horse. I just heard a shot. Let me have that. <laughs> I can't understand it. I, I just left horse here. Uh, and now... From the looks of the room, there must have been a lot of noise. Didn't you hear it? I had my radio turned on while I was dressing. Must have been playing rather loud, wasn't it, Mr. Morton? Not particularly. Why, 
Let's command the horse. Where'd you find him? Lying unconscious under some shrubbery at the side of the house. What happened to you? I was walking across the lawn toward the house when something struck me on the back of the head. That's all I remember. Who's that? The man you were to meet. Hawes had a briefcase with him, but it's nowhere about. And whatever authorization papers he had are gone. I can get another set within 24 hours. I'll attend to it at once. the gold will be stored in the custom house vault until new authorization papers are drawn, covering its transfer to Fort Knox. Every detail has been worked out carefully. A hole has been broken through the wall to a chamber under the vault. Good. Contact the men at once and have them proceed as we planned. Okay, let's go. I think your worries are over now, Mr. Morton. Well, I hope so. Have you taken any precautions to make sure nothing happens to the gold? Guards are placed outside around the building. Bill cars and a Coast Guard cutter patrolling the harbor. And the inspector will be right on the job here. Well, you seem to have covered every angle, Tracy. I don't think anything's going to happen. I'm quite sure of that. I suppose we may as well go. If you want me for anything, I'll be right outside. been acting this way? Oh, about an hour. Started right after you went out. Aren't the two lines of juice running into this building? Yes, one for lights and one for power. That's what I thought. The only time lights flicker this way is when there's a heavy drain on the system. I'll be ready for the crowbar in a minute. It seems to burn steadily now. Whatever's causing it has stopped operating. There they go again. Somebody's cutting in on the lighting circuit. Let's take a look inside this vault.
There's been an attempt on the custom house vault. Full speed ahead! Secret Council knew about Morton's gold shipment. Which one could have been behind this theft? If I can find that out, I'll break this case. It was the ghost who killed the ship's commander and sold the authorization to remove the gold. You think there'll be another attempt to steal it? Yes, I do. Unless you arrest Cabot. His alibi that he was knocked out on Morton's front lawn while the murder was being done inside is fishy enough to convict him. Well, why should he go to all that trouble? As Morton's lawyer handling the transfer of the gold, he had free access to it. He couldn't just walk in and take it. He had to take a roundabout way to cast suspicion away from himself. And that's my theory. Theories won't convict the ghost, Bill. But if your hunch is correct, I think I know a way to nab him. Get Tabbitt on the phone. reading of your fine work last night. Congratulations. Maybe you better save them until the gold reaches its destination. Has anything happened to it? No, but word has leaked out that the gold is being shipped by train. I called to ask if you have any objections to my sending it by armored car. Why, no. No, none at all. I think it's a fine idea. I'll cancel the train reservation. No, let it stand. If the ghost is busy attacking the train, we should get the gold through safely. Of course. But I'll be worried until I hear of its safe arrival. Right. Goodbye. That's certainly handing it to him on a silver platter. That's just what I wanted to do. It's 
is all of it. Lock her up, Jim. Number 15. Go ahead, Dick. Where are you now? They're hijacking the truck. I'm on Highway 105, heading east, away from Route 14. All right, we'll be coming. Keep in touch. Go ahead, Lieutenant. that truck and we'll blow up this armored car. Come in, QR-10. The armored car is still with lead, not gold. That means Tracy double-crossed us and sent the shipment by train as he originally planned. What do we do? 
Stay where you are until you hear from me. I'll send some men from here to take care of the train at Lisa Gorge. Yes, sir. You stay here and take charge until we get back, right? about it now. Come on. So 
bailing out of the plane seemed to be the only way to save them. It worked, but I sure thought you were done for. So did I. Hello. Yes, Mr. Cabot. And that's the hotel. Well, Mr. Tracy's right here. Just a moment. Hello. 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 He hung up. He was so excited I could hardly understand him. What's the trouble? He wants you to meet him in the grill room of the Ambassador Hotel at 8 o'clock. Says it's a matter of life and death. Why couldn't he come here? There's something very phony about this. Perhaps there is. Cabot has been acting strangely. That's why I arranged things so that he alone knew about that gold shipment. Then the ghost attack. Then you think Cabot is the ghost? Possible. All the more reason we should meet him. Why walk into danger? Throw him in jail and sweat the truth out of him. We've got to have more than suspicion to make a move like that. We'll go to the hotel and meet him. Tracy and Carl are both in there, and the music's going plenty loud. Start the machine, Lucifer. Badges the mayor gave the members of the Secret Council for their help in convicting Rackets Regan. Were these given to anyone except the council? No, it's a special award. It all adds up to Cabot. He's a member of the council and he asked you to go there tonight. You think that's Cabot's badge? It might be, but we'll have to prove it. Call all the members of the council. Tell them to come here at once and bring their badges with them. Something important has happened. But before I go into that, I want to ask Mr. Cabot a question. Why didn't you meet me tonight at the Hotel Ambassador? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Why, didn't you telephone me and leave a message for Mr. Tracy? Well, certainly not. I, I, I've been out of town, only got back an hour ago. Perhaps there's been some mistake. 
I'm going to tell you exactly what happened tonight at the hotel. Get ready to cut them as soon as I get the signal. And this was dropped by the man who attempted to kill me. I'm going to ask each of you gentlemen to place your badge on the table in front of you. disappeared. Why, why, why? Now, will each one of you please lay his badge on the table? I brought my father. And yours, Mr. Cabot? Why, I, I had my badge. Right, there's your badge at your feet. Well, thank you. Are you sure this badge is yours, Mr. Cabot? Well, yes, it, it must be. This matter is by no means closed, gentlemen. For the present, I shall say good night. Good night. Good night. Well, it looks like the ghost tricked us again, Dick. Maybe. But I think I'll talk this over with Bill. You pardon me? I thought Tracy had probably marked the badge he found. But I knew he was suspicious of Cabot, so I helped the suspicion along by trading badges with Cabot when he laid his on the table. That was quick thinking. Uh, no one seemed to suspect you. No. Although Cabot did have a very peculiar expression when he looked at the badge. And he wrapped it in a handkerchief before he put it in his pocket. Uh, what's the matter with your finger? I cut it when I was getting the badge away from Cabot. Did it bleed? A little. That's it. I must have left a blood stain, probably a fingerprint, on the badge Cabot picked up. That's what he was so excited about. You've got to take care of Cabot at once. Bring the machine. I noticed a smear of blood. And now I see there's a well-defined fingerprint on it. Yes, go on. Well, I thought you might be able to identify it. I'll come right over.
right where you are, Cabot. Who is it? Where are you? I'm in the room, even though you can't see me. You mean you're invisible? Yes. Now you know why I'm called the ghost. The ghost? What do you want? Why are you here? I've come for that badge that has my fingerprints. I still have a score to settle with you, Cabot. Your score with me? I don't even know who you are. But you remember Rackett's Regan, don't you? The man who was sent to the electric chair by you and the other members of the Secret Council? He was my brother. And you and every man who caused his death are going to pay for it. No, don't. all you could find? No other clues? No. And I'm more convinced than ever that that is the strongest clue we could have. Do you still believe the ghost is wise to our plans before we ever start? Right. And since we only discussed those plans in the secret council meetings, one of our members must be the ghost, or one of his accomplices. But how can we find out whether it's Brewster, Weldon, or Morton? I think I have a plan that will force the right one to make the first move. And when he does, we'll be in a position to nab him. But I'll need your help. I'm listening. I've called a meeting with the Secret Council for 2 o'clock this afternoon. And I want you to... I knew my father had kept a diary, and I had looked for it. But I was unable to locate it until today. Uh, did you bring it with you? No. As soon as I glanced at the contents, I hurried here to ask Mr. Tracy... Ask Mr. Tracy what, June? I found my father's diary of notes on his crime research. There's one whole section devoted to Rackus Regan, his early environment, gang members, and other studies. Good. Where is it? In a concealed safe in Dad's old waterfront laboratory. I found it while I was looking for some other papers. Why do you persist in believing that the ghost is one of Regan's old crowd? Because I'm convinced he leaves Regan's fingerprint to inform us he intends to kill every member of this council for sending Regan to the chair. Well, he may be doing it to furnish us with a false lead. And while you're chasing it up some blind alley, the ghost is marking one of us for death. Gentlemen, I don't question Tracy's ability to deal ultimately with the ghost. Regan is his only lead. I don't think we should interfere with his following. Thanks, Mr. Morton. This diary will help me settle Regan's real position in the case. I'll be free to go to the lab with you in about a half an hour. Will you wait? Certainly. Well, gentlemen, that's all. What 
could Chandler have written in that diary that would implicate you? I'm not sure, but there's one dangerous fact he might have known. That Rackett Regan was your brother? Yes. And if Tracy ever found that out, he might pick up a trail that would lead straight to me. So we're going to get that diary before Tracy has a chance to study it. Second door from the north end. Good. Start the machine, Lucifer. All set. The men are at their stations and they'll call Cosgrove as soon as they hear the sound of the ghost. Good. If he spots any of those men, he may not enter the building. I think he'll want this diary badly enough to try to get it, regardless of any obstacles. the laboratory. on the dictaphone. If it picked up the sound, I may be able to analyze its frequency and find out what it is. That's right. You're an expert in sound research. That's nice work, June. When can we start work on it? Right away. The frequency calibration screen is in the laboratory. Sorry. This machine will photograph the sound wave. I may be able to measure it and break it down. Nothing but blank pages. What was that fool Tracy trying to do? Trap me? He might have. If you had dropped this disc while you were inside. Can you fix it? Yes, I think it's all right now. If put it on, we'll test it. of some kind. What kind of array could interfere with this one? None that I know of. This is the only machine of its kind. Unless? Unless what? Unless someone has invented another one or made a reproduction of the sound in this one. A reproduction?
that was the trick. Tracy must have made a record of the sound. It came over the telephone. That's bad. June Chandler is an expert in sound research. Once she has the frequency of this wave, she can develop a counter ray that will make ours useless. We can't let her. Corey will have to destroy that record before she has a chance. Go get him. I'll need a research book for my library. Good. I have to pick up Bill anyway. I promised to meet him. You better run out and get a bite to eat. We'll meet you back here later. That's a good idea, Dick. Better put that in a safe place. Right. That's fine, Corey. Everything's set. Corey took care of the telephone box and the fire extinguishers. When that telephone receiver is lifted... And we can tell when they've returned to the laboratory by watching for the static disturbance on my machine. Exactly. They were only to be gone a half an hour, so you'd better get your machine started. again. Yes. 
I want to go back and try to save that record. sound of our invisible ray bothered I don't know why. He admitted at the council meeting that the record was destroyed when the laboratory building burned. That's true, but... Stop worrying. I have a plan that will remove Tracy and the other members of the council at one blow. How? You'll have to be careful that suspicion doesn't fall on me. This is what you will have to do. How are you, Jill? Fine, Dick. Here's some messages for you. I wonder how anyone knew we had the sound record down there. I think I have the answer for that. When we played the record back, it created an interference that they picked up. Of course, that's exactly how it would happen. Any call from Brewster about the test on his new aerial torpedo? I don't see any. Hello. Just a minute, Mr. Brewster. He's right here. Hello. Tracy speaking. Brewster! Brewster! Something happened to Brewster. He screamed and then the line went dead. Where was he phoning from? The experimental plant. Come on. be more familiar with the way we work. Behind you, Bill!
Thanks, Dick. What's that? Tied me up. I, I tried to phone you, but they were watching all the time. What were they after the plans for the aerial torpedo? Yes, but the War Department only gave me one section at a time. So they didn't get them? No, but they found out the test was to be at 2 o'clock this afternoon from a telegram I had here. Five minutes to two now. Where's the test being held? At the foot of Brunswick Canyon. The Marines are conducting it. We have a minute to lose, Bill. You can't get there in time. We can try. Tracy calling Lieutenant Cosgrove. Tracy calling Lieutenant Cosgrove. Lieutenant Cosgrove. Go ahead, Tracy. Direct the men to the foothills near Brunswick Canyon. Look for me in the vicinity. Indian range. Wind north by east. Right. Fire warning. All stations send that fast. All ranger stations attention. We just got this, sir. Short wave at the base. We'll clean up here at once. Get your equipment together. We need every man. Fire duty. Yes, sir. All right, men. Follow me. On the devil. Cosgrove enough time to get here. Mr. 
be a good place to block them. Get it out of here. Right, boss. off that torpedo. Brewster? Well, we left him in his office. I saw him jump off the rear of the truck just as you got on it. You're right, he could be the ghost. Sure he could. In fact, he must be. On the other hand, he might have destroyed the torpedo to prevent it falling into unfriendly hands. Yeah, that's possible. Let's get back to Cosgrove's office and see what information we can get from Washington. The miniature... Working model of torpedo is in Brewster's possession. Stand by for instruction. When Brewster told us about the attempt to steal a torpedo, he didn't mention a working model. It looks as though he framed the whole thing. Have model stored in safe place until further orders. Let's get out to the Brewster plant, Bill.
I'm Dick Tracy. Is Mr. Brewster here? Yes, sir. He's in the shop. Drive in. Thank you. the signal. down the highway, Brewster. Who is it? Where are you? I'm the ghost. You can't see me, but you can see this gun. The ghost? Keep your eyes on the road. Here they come. Slow down. Get out. Does this man know what to do? Yes, he'll lead Tracy off our trail. Fine. Get to my car, quick. Double back to get the torpedo. Yes, we've got to get back there. We can't do any good for this man. The radio will send a car from the car to come and take charge.
Turn off the way, Lucifer. Brewster didn't bring the torpedo with him. Now we'll go back to his office so he can get it for us. Tell me where the torpedo model is? No. Bring him outside. I think I can make him change his mind. I said no, and I mean it. Try him up, boys. Maybe we can bring him to a census. is under the clock on, on my desk. Keep him here. We'll see if he's telling the truth. You here, Corey. Go down and see what's wrong. They got Brewster tied up. Use the car as a shield. I'll try to get to him.
exploded. I just heard a gunshot. Then someone else is still in there. You take care of Brewster. I'll go after them. cleared him of all suspicion. It was evident that he knew the ghost was attempting to steal the aerial torpedo. He was seriously wounded, trying to defeat the ghost's plan. He's still unconscious, but under the care of specialists in a well-guarded hospital. His recovery may bring us the identity of the ghost. That's all, June. Send a copy to headquarters, will you? I'll type it right away, Dick. Oh, thanks. Dick, we thought all along the ghost must be a member of the Secret Council. 
looks that way. That's how he knows all our plans. With Brewster out as a suspect, that only leaves Morton and Weldon. One of them must be the ghost. Right. And we can't take a chance on his getting to Brewster. We've got to maneuver Weldon and Morton into a position where they can be watched until Brewster talks. That won't be so easy. It will if an idea I've got works. Let's have it. I want you to phone Weldon and Morton. Tell them to meet me at the Ambassador Hotel at 8 o'clock tonight. Tell them that... I'm expecting trouble tonight. What kind of trouble? I don't know. Tracy has called a special council meeting at the Ambassador Hotel. There are only two of us left, and I think Tracy's suspicions have narrowed down to us. Do you think it's a trap? Naturally. So whatever Tracy's planning, we'll match him trick for trick. Lucifer, you take the machine, park near the hotel, and be alert for a signal. I'll be there. Corey, I want you to stand by that telephone in case I need you. So, gentlemen, when we learned the ghost was determined to kill every one of the council that sent Rackets Regan to the chair, I requested that you keep me advised of your whereabouts so I could arrange for your protection. That hasn't always been convenient, Tracy. Of course not. My time has been overcrowded by urgent business. So was Brewster's. He failed to cooperate, and yesterday the ghost shot him. Brewster shot? Was he killed? No. He rushed into a hospital immediately. The best doctors in the city are trying to save him. But if they fail, only Morton and I are left. And the ghost is bound to strike at one of us next. You've got to save us, Tracy. That's why I brought you here. This place is heavily guarded. You'll remain under our surveillance until Brewster identifies the ghost and we nab him. But I've important business appointments. I'm sorry, I'll have to cancel them for you. I've made no preparations to stay here. May I call my home? I can't risk advertising your whereabouts. I'll have your things brought down. Meanwhile, I think you'll find your rooms very comfortable, Mr. Morton. search from end to end. No matter what happens, you stay here. Right then. get him. I'll check every hospital. Yes, sir, right away. Hey, 
Pick up the cop. Turn it off. But the ghost will become visible. He may be caught. We'll have to take a chance on that. If this is a trap, the cop's wise. If he hears that sound, we'll all be caught. out of their rooms? No, I've been here all the time. We've been barking up the wrong tree. We'll soon find out. Mr. Weldon! Mr. Morton! Mr. Weldon! Yes? What is it? We just wanted to see if you were all right. Why shouldn't I be? What do you want now? I'm afraid I owe you gentlemen an apology. That's the least you can do. I thought I could guard you here, but apparently the danger would be just as great in your own homes. I don't understand. The ghost got by the guards and reached this floor. Did you see him? Yes. Well, who is he? Can you identify him? Unfortunately, I can't. He was mad. I tried to tell you it was foolish bringing us here. We've been able to take care of ourselves so far. I'm afraid I'll have to agree with both of you. Then we are free to leave? Yes, and I'll be glad to furnish a police escort if you wish. That isn't necessary. There's one thing you can do for me. What? Tell me the hospital Brewster's in. I'm sorry. Under the circumstances, I don't think that advisable. Yes, probably you're right. I shouldn't have asked. I'll be glad to keep in touch with you and let you know how he progresses. Thank you. Something screwy around here somewhere. After what happened last night, I'm sure Tracy has been thrown off the track completely. Now, if we can only locate Brewster and keep him from talking. 
Yes? Corey. You found Brewster? Yeah, they've got him hidden in a private sanitarium. Sure I know what room. He's in an oxygen tent. It won't be easy, but I'll take care of him. Right. Mr. Brewster seems to be resting comfortably, but he may be unconscious for hours. I'd like to be here when he comes to. Well, why don't you wait in Dr. Jones's office, Mr. Casey, and I'll call you as soon as there's any change in his condition. Perhaps I'd better. They killed Brewster. the gas tank. It'd be duck soup following the trail like that. Right. I'm going to call Cosgrove and have some squad car stand by. Go 
down to the back. You should have silenced the nurse, Corey. Undoubtedly, your description has been broadcast from one end of the state to the other. I'll lay low until things blow over. That's right, but you'll do it on the coast. Take a plane, I'll fly out. I'll change clothes and get back to town so I can keep in touch with things. Hold it. Now the ghost walks right into our hands. You want to take that mask off yourself or shall I do it for you? I intend to go on wearing this mask for a long time. There must be trouble outside. See what it is. So he can make himself invisible. That explains a lot of things. There's no time to lose. Trace is here. Tracy calling state police headquarters. Come in, Tracy. I'm following him. He's headed north toward Highway 98. All right, Tracy, I'll broadcast a general alarm. State police headquarters calling all cars. Calling all cars.
That man they've been operating on the ghost? No. His name is John Corey, and he was working with the ghost. I don't know who the ghost is, but I know what he is. I don't understand. The ghost is a super criminal who has the power to... who has the power to become invisible. Invisible? Oh, but Dick, that's impossible. I saw him disappear within six feet of me. Who was he? I don't know. He wore some sort of a mask. But if I could only... doctor? Yeah. How is he? We can't tell yet. It's a brain injury and the vocal cords have been severed. You can't... You can't dog it any longer. The doc says you can go. It's me. Phone June and tell her I'll be right over the office. Will you, Lieutenant? And ask the nurse to send in my clothes? Sure thing. You'll stay here and keep an eye on Corey. Guess, so I'll show you. This device makes an invisible man become visible. Really? How does it work? It's called a cathode detector. <laughs> These batteries furnish a special kind of power for this infrared x-ray bulb. Isn't that the long wave developed by the signal core? Yes, it's on the same principle. The X-ray can penetrate substance and show what is underneath. The rays from this bulb reverse that and reveal substance that cannot be seen by the human eye. I don't get it. I'll show you. Dick, it's amazing. Everything has opposite values, like a snapshot negative. Exactly. And that very quality in this bulb makes it our ghost trap. Of course. Under the rays from this bulb, the ghost will become visible. Well, that is if he comes here. Don't worry. He'll come. I'll see to that. Well, I've been watching the Chandler house. Tracy's up to something. He's called a council meeting for tonight, and he's having Corey brought there from the hospital. And he's going to have Corey identify you. You mustn't go. I'll go with pleasure. After tonight, we'll never be in danger again. I'll remove the three of them. Corey, Tracy, and the other member of the Secret Council of Eight. Be careful. They've had an electric alarm system installed covering the grounds. Before I go, we'll locate the powerhouse that furnishes electricity to that entire district. to do when you hear loose of a signal. Kill the master switch. This is it right here. All right, Lucifer. Stand by, Lucifer, and see if there's no slip-up. I'm ready to go to Chandler's.
take him in by the fireplace and then post the guard. Right. Are you sure you remember everything that Dick wants you to tell Morton and Weldon? Absolutely, every word. Good. Once you talk to them, go into the lab and close the door. The minute you hear the ghost high frequency sound, turn on the detector, which lights the infrared x-ray bulb in that lamp right there. I understand. Mr. Morton's here. Send him in, please, Lieutenant. I'm on my way. Good evening, Mr. Morton. Hello, Carl. Good evening, Mr. Morton. Oh, good evening, Miss Chandler. Oh, is uh, Mr. Weldon here? Not yet. Come in, Mr. Weldon. Hello, Morton. And, oh, hello, Weldon. Who's that, Corey? Yes. He's had a sedative, but he should wake up soon. Then he hasn't spoken yet? No. He has a temporary paralysis of the vocal cord. But he signaled his willingness to Mr. Tracy to give valuable information in exchange for a pardon. I see. Where is Tracy? He's on his way here now with the doctor. The doctor's coming? Yes. He'll give Corey a stimulant if he needs one. Perhaps I'd better phone and see just when they left. time of you, Morton? 8.15? Yes, that's what I make it. The ghost is ready to become invisible. It can't feel the signal. The light. Well, the power must be off. Keep calm, Weldon. Oh, my God. 
them all. They've got bloodhounds. I'm going to escape over the high tension wires on the roof. the ghost finally paid for his crimes. It was retribution, but it wasn't nice to look at. The current from the ghost body, transmitted to the machine that made him invisible, killed his accomplice Lucifer. It's difficult enough to believe that Morton was the ghost, but what possible connection could he have had with Rackett's Regan? Regan was Morton's brother. That's how Regan defied the law so long. Morton betrayed every plan of the Secret Council of Eight to him. They planned a vast criminal combine. An enterprise which might have been called Crime Incorporated. Did you find anything else in Morton's effects? Yes. The secret of the high-frequency machine that made him invisible. All this data has been destroyed, so that no criminal can ever again make use of it. You and June always had a hunch it was something like that. When I found that Corey was dead, I saw a chance to get the ghost in the range of the infrared lamp. It worked. It certainly did, Dick. It's a great relief to know that the ghost will never threaten us again. <laughs> Dick! <laughs> well, it looks like our collaborators are here. Come on in, boys. Come on. <laughs>